uh, I get I get sort of caught up sometimes, and I want to preach everything at once. And I know we can't do that because I'd be here until Jesus come, and and I don't know what that is. But I want to explain something to you first of all. There was a baby born in Bethlehem. His name was Jesus. This birth in the Gospels is talked about in two books. It's talked about in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke. And when you look at it in the book of Matthew, it gives you an understanding as to why, how God did this. How did God impregnate her? He didn't take her to a, a frat party and get her drunk. He didn't spike a drink. He didn't do that. He didn't come down and put on a man's suit and lay in the bed with her. So let's have an understanding, first of all, that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. God is not a man. And so all these Christians that get upset when we say Jesus is not God the Father, they get upset. Let me quote that real quick. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot be the son and the daddy. You just can't do it. Okay, so he sent Gabriel with a message and he told a young girl of the age about 13 or 14 years old that she was going to have a baby. She agreed to it. She said, whatever the Lord want to do, blessed be the name of the Lord. And then Gabriel told her, he said, that thing in your womb, that holy thing, shall be called the Savior of the world. His name shall be called Jesus. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. I'm trying to bring y'all along because I want you to understand something. This is not a game. The devil is busy tricking people, and they get mad at you. I don't know why they get so mad when people say uh, uh, they wanted us to take the nativity scene down. Take it down. It's idolatry anyway. That's junk. That's the, light, put some gasoline on it and light a match. Watch it burn. God ain't got nothing to do with that mess. Huh? That's devilish. But, but it's for the children. No, it ain't. God didn't tell you to teach your children devilment. He did not tell you to teach your children idolatrous practices. Jesus is not a baby stamp Mattel on the bottom of his foot. He is not battery operated. He does not have blonde hair, blue eyes, and he don't talk when you squeeze it. Jesus is a man. Uh-huh, because everybody that gets born of a woman, except they die a child, grows up to be an adult woman or a man. Yeah, let me tell you why they don't, because babies can't run nothing. That's why they want to keep them in the manger. Y'all looking at me like I'm speaking Greek. See, some of y'all want that. Well, in the Greek it says, I'm not going to go there. We're Americans. We speak English. I'm going to keep it very simple. Jesus is not a baby. It is easy. The devil got people think, well, it's so beautiful this time of year. This time, I'm so sick of those words. This time of year, this time of year. Why don't you get saved this time of year? Why don't you repent of those idolatrous practices? Give your life to Christ. Quit being churchy and become a part of the church. Try that on. And then you'll actually say, wow, he's not a baby. But they want them because a baby can't tell you to repent. A baby can't talk. A baby won't walk on water. A baby won't lay hands on the leper and see him healed. A baby, you can't touch a baby's hem and watch the blood stop. Uh, you can't watch a baby break bread after blessing and feed 5,000. Uh, they See, as long as they can keep him a baby, they can take your money because a baby can't stop a robber. Are oh, y'all with me? See, they robbing y'all. They got them. You know why they call it Black Friday? Because that's Satan's business. Yeah. Come on now. That's why it's called Black Friday. Yeah. All you, and why would God have his children celebrate his only begotten son in a Walmart store fighting over a 50 cent, 50 inch high def TV? Why? A baby can't stop you from doing that. As long as we keep him in the manger, we don't have to do what he said. We can, we can make the rules as we go along. Y'all yeah. huh? yeah. go with me to the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to get this started. I'm going to take you in the book. Huh? See, that's, uh, babies grow up. Huh? You feed them, you water them. They grow up and then they start sassing you. Right. <laughs> uh, and then you put some of that cow leather on them. Right. When y'all find Matthew, Matthew chapter 2. Look with me at verse 15. 
No, we're going to go to verse 11. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And the word of God reads, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now look with me at verse, uh, yeah, stay there, verse 12. I want you to go ahead and sit down. I want you to mark Luke chapter 2. Now, that, those two verses were speaking to some wise men. We're in short supply of those today. We don't have very many wise. We got those that, that's cunning and devise wickedness. Like, we could give you a plastic, put together, reusable nativity scene. Complete with the Mary doll and the Joseph doll and the camel doll and the donkey doll. How they know what was in the barn? They want everything artificial now, including faith. Huh? Wise men know what's true. These magi came from the east and they moved to the west because they'd been doing what Jesus tells us to do. So they've been watching and praying. And so they found that on the way they, they, the, the star that led them was very clear. And you'll find that when they got there, they were presented. Luke, uh, Herod heard they were in town to see this child. Uh, and they were looking for where he might be found. Now, the journey, based on my studies, uh, was 9,187.4 9, miles. 9, miles from where they left to where they got to. 9,187 miles. That's a long way, ain't it? Okay, so they, they, they got in, uh, 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 meters, I mean. So they got in a caravan to go and see where this person would be laying. And every night they went to bed, the star was there. Every morning they woke up, the star was there. And they get there because they're looking for the king of the Jews. Because they've been paying attention. It is believed that these people came from the area of what we know now of as Iran or Pakistan, Afghanistan, all that used to be Persia. And when you're traveling by camel and pony and donkey and caravan, you got to have a group with you to feed you in the middle of the wilderness. You got to cross some water. It took them time to get there. And by the time they got there, if you'll remind, remember, I'm going to show you in Luke how the angels, when they heard about it and they told the shepherds about it, and the shepherds said, let's go see this baby. That's when they went to the barn. Right here, you find that the wise man went to a house. Some time had passed from barn to house. Huh? And so they get there and they're looking for this child. And Herod says, well, you know, let me know when you find him. Because Herod didn't want any competition. I told you about this. But there's more to the story. See, when they got there, they had three gifts. And they've made an industry out of these gifts. These three men, they were kings. The Bible don't say they were kings. We've taken Magi and made them kings now. I uh, said they were bearing gifts. Yes, they were bearing gifts. But these gifts were significant to the personhood of our Savior. Gold is his riches. Frankincense is, is the beauty of what he brings us. And myrrh is the aromatic prayers that he send up on our behalf. Amen. And so when you look at that, the Bible never calls them kings. I'm going to show you how the devil does that. He said, look, if I can get this stuff to look really good and sound fancy, they'll, they'll believe me. He tried that with Jesus. He, he said, look, I'm going to show you all this stuff right here. He said, and if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. Yep. That's what Satan told Jesus. And don't you hear that on don't you hear that on the commercials? Yep. You deserve this. Yep. Don't you deserve a better face? Don't you deserve the hips that look good so you won't have to throw away your clothes? Don't you deserve the car that you cannot afford? Don't you deserve this beautiful mansion? Don't your children deserve and you deserve and you are what you deserve. You deserve what God has blessed you to obtain by just means. Yeah. So here you have this, this idea that this baby is special, and indeed he is. You find that Herod wanted him dead, and the angel warned him, said, don't you go tell that man where this child is. 
Don't you do that. He was probably trying to walk like J.J. when, when, he, got, when he got there. He, oh, he was probably perfected walking by the time the Magi got there. Uh, and he, they presented him with these gifts. And Mary took all this in, didn't she? Uh-huh. So now we know that he was. But then he grew up and there's a point in the Bible where it tells us that they went to go on the Passover. They went to go and do homage at the temple. And Jesus was 12 years old at this point. And when Jesus goes with his family, everybody go to, to Jerusalem with his family at the age of 12. They get ready to leave in a caravan back. You ever travel with your whole family? Have a family reunion? And your, you and your cousins and your cousins' cousins and their friends and their friends' cousins and all your kinfolk get together and go to Austin somewhere. So everybody's convoying. So you got to take a head count. On the way back, you're supposed to take another head count. When you're loading up the RV and the van and the car and the truck, you want to make sure all them youngins there. Well, they were gone a ways. And they said, where Jesus? Now notice, if he was a baby, they would have been carrying him closer by. They would have been saying, don't you, don't you go over there too far now. He would have had to be in an eye shot and an ear shot. But at 12 years old, he's almost a man. Uh, 12 years old, when he's 13 years old, he's a man. At 12 years old, he was out hanging with the buds. But no, that's not what he was doing. He decided, I'm going to stay around church for a while. huh? That's what he said. He, I'm going to hang out at the temple. I want to know some more about my father's business. A baby couldn't do that. A baby could not say and of themselves, I'm just going to stick around and hang out at the church with the priest. And, and the, but Jesus said, I'm going to stick around. And they began to look for him. And they searched for him. They were panicking. Can you imagine? I know what that feels like. Really. We lost our daughter at a, at a big old uh, festival they had in Huntsville, Alabama. I think she was all of about six. And uh, it was over 20,000 people out there. And we were getting ready to look at the temptations. They, were, they cut up too, y'all. I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to throw that in there. They was jamming. And so we were getting ready to look at the temptations. And my, my, me and my wife went to go get something to snack on, left her with, 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 our grandma, with her grandmother. And when we came back, we saw the grandma, didn't see my kid. Where's Miranda? Well, she went to the uh, restroom. She pointed towards the porta john. They were about as far from us where we were to right across the street. And all them people in between there. What did, what did I do? I ran looking at the porta john. My daughter wasn't there. We wait. She wasn't there. We looked around. She wasn't there. You know, your eyes get keen when you can't find your child. You, you could almost draw them without even looking at the paper. And we looked for her, and we looked for her, and we went straight to security, went to my mother. I was hot. Now, somebody should have had at least one eye on her, but she found us. And that's something. She had took a high road. She went up and got on a high place by a fence, and she looked until she realized this is about where my family was. And she found us. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, my mouth went dry. My heart started beating fast. So you can imagine Mary and Joseph, they're looking. They're trying to find, where, help me find your brother. Because you know she had other kids. Catholics don't want to believe that because they think for some reason after she had Jesus, God closed up her womb. Mary had more kids. There was about six of them, six or seven of them. Uh, it's in the Bible. They didn't even name them, some of them. Amen. Am I right about it, Pastor? Yeah. I'm right about it. Yeah. James, huh? You got Simon, Simone, There's a couple of them. Jose, he had one named Jose, probably from the barrio. Uh, but where do they find Jesus? They don't find him climbing back in a manger in a barn. They don't find him laying down in a barn with a camel and a donkey around him. They don't find him in a barn with a light glowing around his head. They don't find him in a barn and a little brother over there playing the drums. They, ain't no, they don't find him in a barn. They find him on the stairs of the temple asking questions of the priest in the temple, the teachers. And his mama said, why would you do this? You had us worried sick. Some mamas would have grabbed by the ear. What was wrong with you? But she respected his manhood, his ensuing manhood. 
that don't, we don't have a record that Joseph struck him. Because Joseph knew who he was too. Uh, he, I, I would have been a little bit leery about popping him myself. Like, yo, Jesus, hey, sorry, what, what happened? Why you here? You know. But he clearly stated, I must be about my father's business. See, the heathen don't mind him laying in a manger. But they know that if you put him in his father's business, that means he's going to get in your business. Huh? He didn't come to do what he wants. He came to do what he was sent here to do by the father. Babies can't make their own bottles. Babies can't get up and make sound decisions. They want them in the manger so they can stay in their sin. Uh huh. Oh, the baby Jesus, the baby Jesus, the baby Jesus. Let me be clear on this to all the heathens watching this. All you lovely Christians that have been duped. Jesus is no longer a baby. Tear that idolatrous, devilish junk. Down. Uh, he must not have been able to get presents when he was a kid. <laughs> See, he got issues. See, he, 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 yeah, that's probably something wrong with him. He got a psychological barrier. It's called the Holy Ghost. Huh? If you will honestly think about it, we were duped for a lot of years, weren't we? Yeah, we thought, oh, man, this is so fun. God is so happy. The more lights, the more Jesus. No, it ain't. The more lights, the more kindling you add into the fire. Huh? People don't want to hear that. Okay, so now we know that he, he was 12 years old, and then we find him again at about the age of 29, 30 years old, getting baptized by John, his cousin. He goes, and, and, and now we know that he, he has been doing things, and he's been showing forth the power of God. The first miracle denoted was when he looked at the water, and it blushed and became wine. Uh, at, the, at the wedding of Canaan, you remember that? Uh, she said, son, he said, we're out of wine. Wasn't even Jesus' house. Wasn't even his party. Might have been, I don't know, maybe one of his sisters was getting married. We're not told whose wedding it was. But, but we're told that the, the host, which it could have been, what, the, the father-in-law of his sister, uh, was, was out of wine. And Jesus said, bring me some water. He said, but first thing he said, well, woman, what have I got to do with you? What's, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? He was talking to his mama. Uh, some people said, well, isn't that not honoring his mother? Did he? Say? He honored her. But he was a man. She was a woman. He made sure she understood her place, even being mama. I remember an occasion I told my wife to go get me a glass of water. It was at my mother's house. And my mother turned around and said, you can go get your own water. I said, woman, you're out of order. I said, this is my wife. And my mother said, mm. and my wife went and got my water. There was no law broken. I wasn't disrespecting my strong black woman. <laughs> uh, I, come on now. Talk about, see, see how that's what's wrong with them black men. <laughs> <laughs> huh? But I was in the word. So Jesus said, bring me the water. What does he do? He looks at the water and it blushes. It, said, it knew what the matter. He didn't say, seem, seem, sort of being from water to wine become. He didn't do any of that. He didn't throw nothing in it. He didn't spit in it. He didn't touch it three or four times. He looked at it. And it became wine. It obeyed. See, the fig tree didn't obey when he looked at the fig tree. So he killed the fig tree. Babies can't do that. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus was able to fry fish on the beach side. Huh? Babies can't do that. Oh, let, let me not get ahead of myself here because I'm trying to help you understand. Quit thinking God ought to treat you like a child when you ought to rise up and be grown. That's what they want. They want to believe, oh, my, my God won't do that. Yes, he will. He'll watch you burn while his heart breaks. Because he loves you, but what he loves more than everything he created is his word. He will not make exception for you above his word. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care if your grandpappy, your grandpappy's grandpappy's grandpappy were all preachers. If you are not humbling yourself to his word and get rid of these idolatrous practices, you are going to answer. 
and it ain't going to be pretty. There's no bargaining when you die. There's no, but Lord, look, I, I mean, I didn't know, you know, I was over here and they was trying, I think they were saying something, but you know, there's none of that. There's none of that. Get it right now. See, Jesus knew his time wouldn't come. He was trying to get everything in order right then while he was there. Then he says, there's going to come a time when I'm going to have to leave and you can't go yet. Yeah. Amen. Children can't make those decisions. Babies don't do that. When the, when, when, the, when the three men, the three wise men came, Jesus was not a baby. He was a toddler. He was a child. He was a little fella. Huh? All this stuff and people want to get all light and, uh, and cut your cousin out at the family reunion. With your Bible and your windshield and your hood in the front of your, on your dashboard. No, you will. Get you a couple of shots and you'll cuss anybody out. Be blessing your tequila shot in the name of Jesus. You devil, you. At the company Christmas party, all up on the table. Talk about, hoo hoo, Mr. Toe, Mr. Toe, Mr. Toe. You a mistletoe hoe. You up there wanting to run to them. You, 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 you'd have got you two new bridges in your mouth and want to, like everybody want to kiss you. You devil, you. At the Christmas party. I'm just trying to help you. You know, the devil's out there and he's just raping the minds of God's people. Because don't nobody want to stand up in church. You know, the Baptists, they scared. They know oh, because I'm going to lose some. I, I just bought this Lincoln. I just bought this. I don't want to lose this brand new. I just, man, it got on star, off star, west star, east star. You devil, you. It drive itself. Got somebody in the dashboard talking to me better than my wife. Wow. Closest place to the, to the <laughs> fastest route to the football game. Okay, baby, turn right. <laughs> okay, go four more, four miles. <laughs> At the end of four miles, turn left, honey. <laughs> He'd have programmed the thing to call it baby and honey. It's going to happen. You watch what I tell you. They're going to pick their favorite voice, too. Lena Horn or Anita Baker, who you want talking to you? Oprah Winfrey, who you are? You are. Some people gonna have Obama, and uh, that's about the lowest you can go, I think. But, but if if you look at the scriptures, he's 12 years old. He said, "I must be about my father's business." What is his father's business? His father's business is to show the people.